Hi, this is sixth grade module one, lesson eight of Engage New York, and you'll need the classwork to go along with this video. So on the classwork, example number one says circle any equivalent ratios from the list below. So go ahead and push pause as you try to calculate whether or not the ratios are equivalent, and if they are, circle them. Okay, you may have circled 1 to 2 and 5 to 10. Well, we are familiar with these numbers and we've worked with them enough to know that 1 is half of 2, just like 5 is half of 10. So if we were going to write these ratios as a fraction, we would have 1 half and 5 tenths. 5 tenths is not in simplest form. So if we found the greatest common factors, we would see the greatest common factor is 10. You divide both the top and the bottom by the greatest common factor. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 10 divided by two, 5 is 2, which would give us an equal value. So if you circled 1 to 2 and 5 to 10, you are correct. Now, some of you may not have circled 6 to 16 and 12 to 32. But if we take a closer look at them, we might notice that they are equivalent also. We need to list the factors of six, which is one, six, two, three. Factors of 16 are one, 16, two, eight, four. So we can look here to find our greatest common factor is two. Six divided by two is three. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So 6 sixteenths value is 3 eighths. And we'll need to do the same with 12 30 seconds. 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, 4. We have 1, 32, 2, 16, 4, 8, Five times nothing, six times nothing, seven times nothing. So that's all the factors of 32. Our greatest common factor is four. So if we divide the top and the bottom by four, 12 divided by four is three, and 32 divided by four is eight. They also have equal value and therefore are equivalent ratios. So the correct answer is to circle one to two with five to 10, 6 to 16 with 12 to 32. Now, we, we kind of went ahead and did part B of that one. That's okay. So what are you going to notice? What do you notice about the equivalent ratios? They also have equal value. Okay. And down at the bottom on exercise number two, it says if two ratios are equivalent, then they have the same value. And that's what we've just shown you there. So go ahead and take a few minutes, take two ratios that you know are equivalent and compare them with their values. See if you can find any ratios that are equivalent but don't have the same value. Push pause until you're finished with that. You are probably unable to find any ratios that are equivalent that don't have the same value because it just can't be done. All ratios that are equivalent also have equal value. That's one way you can prove that they are equivalent. So none of the ratios that you should have tried would be able to prove that. Now on the back, we're going to go to exercise number two. And it says, Tavon is training for a duathlon which is a race that consists of running and cycling. The running leg, the cycling leg is longer than the running leg of the race. So while Tavon trains, he rides his bike more than he runs. During training, Tavon runs four miles for every 14 miles he rides his bike. A asks us to find the ratio associated with this problem and find its value. 
Go ahead and push pause until you've done so. Okay. It says in the duathlon that Tavon runs four miles for every 14 miles that he cycles. So if we were going to create a ratio of runs to cycles, you should have four to 14. So your ratio associated with this problem is four to 14. Now it asks us to find the value. So we need to think back to when our, when we are finding the value of a ratio, Think back to the value of the ratios, and that means we need, are looking for it in a fraction. So you need to put that into fraction form, and then we need to get it in simplest form. So you find the factors of four, and then the factors of 14. The greatest common factor is two. Now, we know it's in simplest form when the greatest common factor is one. So with the greatest common factor being two, we can divide by the greatest common factor. Four divided by two is two. 14 divided by two is seven. So the value of four to 14 is two seconds. So that will help you answer part A. Part B says, when Tavon completed all of his training for the duathlon, the ratio of the total number of miles that he ran to the total number of miles that he cycled was 80 to 280. Is this consistent with Tavon's training schedule? Explain why or why not. Now, boys and girls, this is the part that sometimes tricks us up. We automatically want to get into the mathematics of solving this problem, which is great. However, it's important that we answer the question being asked. So the question says, is this consistent with Tavon's training schedule? There are only two possible answers for this question. Either yes, it is consistent with Tavon's training schedule, or no, it's not consistent with the training schedule. So when you answer part B, your answer should start with yes or no. And then it asks you to explain. So after you decide yes it is consistent or no it's not, you'll tell me how you know. You know because blah blah blah. So your answer is going to be in this format. So what I want you to do now is decide what the training schedule is that it's asking you to be consistent with. So what is Tavon's training schedule? Okay, Tavon's training schedule is what he intends to do. He intends to run four miles for every 14 miles that he cycles. So this is his training schedule. So we can tell that those numbers are not the same, but it's asking if it's consistent. Think about what consistent means. Consistent means it matches up, it's continuous. Maybe it's even repeating. So they are asking, did he actually stick to his training schedule? Does it match? One way that we can tell if ratios match or if they're equivalent is if they have equal value. We already know the value of his training schedule is two sevenths. So now we need to know if the, if the value of 80 to 280 is equal to two sevenths. So push pause until you have calculated that. So we can kind of use the explanation of equivalent ratios to think about how we're going to solve this problem. We know that if these two ratios are, if the values are equivalent, 
we can multiply them by the same number to get to two sevenths, or divide by the same number to get two sevenths. So here's kind of the equation that we have set up. Two times what number equals 80? Seven times what number would equal 280? Now, there's a couple of ways you could solve this. You could do it by solving a simpler problem. If you cover up the zero, two times what is eight? Hopefully it's helping you relate to the fact that two times four is eight. So two, this helps me know that two times 40 is 80. Well, we could do the same here. Seven times what is 28? Seven times four is 28. But it's for 280, so we know seven times 40 is 280. So you can do it by solving a simpler problem. For those of you that are very comfortable with the uh, fact families, you could say 80 divided by two is 40. And therefore 40 must go in the blank. And you could do the same for that. So because I can divide both of these by their greatest common factor, which is 40. 80 divided by 40 is two. 280 divided by 40 is 7, so these two ratios do have equal value. So we have just proven that 4 to 14 and 80 to 280 have equal value. They're equivalent ratios. But did that answer the question? The question said, is this consistent to his training schedule? They have equivalent ratios, so yes, it is consistent because the value of 80 to 280 is equal to the value of 4 to 14. Is this consistent with the training schedule? Yes. Explain the value of 280 of 80 to 280 is equal to the value of 4 to 14. That answers the question for B. Okay, and there's a third and final part to this question. It says, in one training session, Tavon traveled, he ran four miles and cycled seven miles. Did this training represent an equivalent ratio of the distance he ran to the distance he cycled? Why or why not? So for part C, they gave us the ratio of ran to cycled four to seven miles. And they want to know, is this consistent with his overall training? Does it represent equivalent distances for the, his overall distance? Why or why not? So again, we can go back and find the value of this ratio to see if it's equal, to see if it matches. So I write this in fraction form and list the factors of 4, list the factors of 7. The greatest common factor is 1. So this ratio, this fraction is already in simplest form. So the value of 4 to 7 is 4 sevenths. Is that consistent with the value of our training schedule? That answers the question. So four sevenths, is that equal to two sevenths? C says, is this represent an equivalent ratio of the distance he ran to the distance he cycled? So your answer is yes or no. And then it asks you why or why not. So no, it's not equivalent because the value of four to seven is not equal to the value of four to 14.